And so for emphasis this morning, I will be reading Ruth 3.18. Ruth 3.18. When you have it this morning, say amen. amen. And the Bible reads, Then she said, Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man will not rest until he has concluded this matter. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his word. And this morning we are going to take for a simple subject matter, seeking God through submission. Seeking God through submission. Many times we talk about wanting to have a relationship with God. But Ruth is a testimony to everyone who wants to have a relationship with God. In order to have a relationship with God, we must be totally submissive to God. I want us to understand something that submission is not a buffet. Submission is not a place that you go and you say, when I want submission, I get it. And when I don't want it, I don't get it. And I still have a relationship with God. God is not like the devil. The devil actually doesn't care what you believe as long as you don't believe in God. The devil actually doesn't care what you do as long as you don't do God's will. But when it comes to God... We're either all in or we're all out. There's no in between. And we're going to have to learn that sooner than later so that we can stop being, as some are, in sometimes and out sometimes. This is not a buffet. This is not a cafeteria. Submission is something that we must do every moment of our life so God will guide us. And I find it to be so powerful, and forgive me, I did not put this in my slide presentation this morning, but I've been talking about this throughout the book of Ruth. I keep going back to this scripture because it's so powerful. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And y'all know that I get caught up in words and scriptures. I love these words because they say so much. I'm going to show you another word this morning that has caught my, my, my eye and caught my mind, has my spidey senses tingling, as I like to say. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently circle this word, seek him. Now, when we think about seek, I remember as a child, we used to play hide and seek. That means that someone would hide and we would be looking for them. But that's not what this word is saying. When the Bible says that those who seek him diligently, the word seek in this biblical context means that someone who goes to find something to get the solution and the reward. So if God is the rewarder, he is, the, he is the rewarder of those who seek the rewarder. I, I want you to hear that again. Some people seek rewards, but God is not looking for people who are seeking rewards. He is seeking those who are seeking the rewarder. And so we find something about Ruth as we get into Ruth chapter three. <laughs> that Ruth, a poor Moabite woman who has come to Bethlehem, Judah, with her mother-in-law, she has took notice to this man, Boaz. And so now we see that Naomi, who was once bitter because she felt like that God was bitter towards her, we now see where now Naomi has begun to perk up. 
And I can't go into the long story. You're missing this because I'm definitely drawing it out. Amen. I am drawing this out because I want to milk every ounce of God's goodness out of this. But long story short, I don't find it to be strange that when Naomi was in Moab, that Ruth hasn't turned to God. I don't find it strange that now that they have turned back to God and they are in Bethlehem, Judah, with God and the people of God, that now all of a sudden where Naomi was telling Ruth the wrong things, she is telling Ruth the right things. You can't tell people truth outside of God. There is no truth outside of God. There is no truth without God. And so now that Naomi is back with God and God is showing her his work, now Naomi has realized that this Boaz, who, who Ruth is telling her about, this Boaz can redeem them or redeem Ruth. So now Naomi, boy, she begins to tell her all of the right things, all of the right things that she needs to do in order to have a relationship with God. And this is why I tell all of us this morning, we need to know the truth of God. We have to stop telling people what we think. If what we think does not line up with, word, with God's word, keep it to yourself. When people come to us about God, and they trust us enough and love us enough to tell them about God. We owe it to them to tell them about God according to his word and not according to our opinion. We got too many people with too many opinions and everyone has an opinion. There has to be a baseline. There has to be something that everyone conforms to. And that is the word of God. And the word of God is not open to private interpretation. The word of God must be interpreted the way God wants it interpreted so that when people hear it, they will do what is right. And you hear me every single Sunday, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And what that means is that faith comes by hearing, you must hear with the intent of doing God's will. And if you hear with the intent to do God's will, what is required to do God's will is total submission. So we're about to see something in Naomi that she is a testimony to everyone that will come to God, total submission. When we say we have decided to follow Jesus, we are basically making the same proclamation in a sense that Ruth has made way back in Ruth 1, 16 and 17. She told Naomi, entreat me not to leave you or turn back from following after you for wherever you go, I will go. Do we realize that when we decide to follow Jesus, wherever he lead us, that's where we're going. Amen. Amen. And he may not lead us in the paths of where we want to go, but you better believe he will lead us in the paths of righteousness. And the paths of righteousness have nothing to do with being right. Everyone wants to be right, but no one seems to want to be righteous. Righteous is doing God's will, even if it is not comfortable, comfortable for you or comfortable for the other person. We must stay on the path of righteousness no matter what. And Ruth is a testimony to that. She says, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. She is saying, I'll leave my family for you. I said it this morning in communion. I said it in Sunday school. A great ministry is not marked by what you gain. A great Christian life is not marked by what you gain. This is the world. The world loves awards. At every turn, we have figured out a way to give an award for every single thing because everyone wants to be recognized. But isn't it strange that when you look at the great men and women in the Bible, when you look at Jesus, when you look at Paul, isn't it powerful? It was all about what they gave up. It was all about what they gave up to serve Jesus. We even have people this morning. They couldn't give up the world to serve Jesus. They had to go serve the world first, and so they can't come to church. We should be giving up things in the world so we can serve God. 
And we give up those things because that's how we prove what is the acceptable will of God. Some of us are backwards. We're so all about how much we have accumulated in material things and rewards in the world. And when someone asks us, how was God blessed us? That's what we present, isn't it? Oh, yes, God has blessed me. Look at all of my material stuff. Look at my house. Look at my car. Look at my job. Look at my friends. Look at all of the stuff. I No, no, no. Tell people. Rather than what you've gained. Tell them what you have given up. Tell them, hey, I've given up my family. It's not that I've given up my family, but there's some relationships in my family I don't really have anymore. Why? Because I decided to follow Jesus. Well, why are you not at this function today? Because my family has decided they're not going to follow Jesus, but I am. We need to tell people what have we given up. But too often we're not telling anybody what we're giving up. We try to, on face value, we try to present ourselves in a, in a way to where people will look up to us. I'm not worried about people looking up to me. In actuality, I would rather people look down at me, look down at me, because that's exactly where I want you to see me, at the foot of Jesus. I don't need you to look at me and, and think more of me than, than, than what I am. Just look down at me because I want you to be down with me also. Because if we're going to have a relationship with God, we must totally submit ourselves to God. And this is the testimony of Ruth. We're Naomi, whose name means pleasant. She wasn't acting pleasant because her circumstances she felt wasn't right. But when God brings her back, Reluctantly, all of a sudden her circumstances now, they seem to be getting a little bit better. And now we see some restoration in Naomi. Why? Because Naomi needs to be restored because she was not being submissive to God. And so now Ruth, through her submission, she is encouraging Naomi. And Naomi, because now she is starting to be submissive to God once again. Now she's encouraging Ruth and she's going to tell Ruth the right thing. Ruth says, your people shall be my people and your God, my God. When we come to Jesus, we drop all of our religions and we follow the word of God. I don't care what your religion is before you come into Christ. When you come into Christ, now you follow Jesus through the word. Just get rid of all that other stuff. Don't cling to your old stuff. You are a new creature in Christ. She says, where you die, will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more so also, if anything, but death, that de de death parts you and me. And so we are seeing something in Ruth. She has decided to follow God. She made that confession, and now she's doing it. Faith is not just what we believe. Faith is what we do based on what we believe. Amen. And so when we look at Ruth, we look at the plan. Now, the plan is simple. God's word, God's will. That's the plan. Amen. We make a whole lot of plans. And I notice sometimes in a lot of our plans, God's will is not in there. We get so lost in the sauce that we don't see that God needs to be where we begin every one of our plans. And so when we look at Ruth and now Naomi is giving her the plan it is powerful how in Ruth 1, 9, when Naomi is telling her, hey, go back to be with your people. Find your husband among your own people. I hope you find rest. Well, that wasn't God's will. That was not God's will. If we are in God, we should never want someone to be in the world. We should want them to be with God because we're with God. And so now that she is back with God, now she is going to give Ruth the right instruction. The Bible says then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you? Is that not the question she asked earlier? But I love the fact that Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you. You know what Ruth was telling her? I urge you diligently, stop telling me to leave you. She wasn't telling her right. 
If you're not right with God, you can't tell people right. You have to be right with God to tell people right. Naomi is now right with God because she's back with God. She's back with the people of God. She has brought her daughter-in-law with her. And now what she's saying is right. Shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? Do we not sing a song that it is well? One of my favorite songs we sing, it is well. Well, do we not understand that nothing can be well with anybody unless they're with God? If we don't have a relationship with God, it's not well with us. And we need to stop being fooled by the comforts of nice homes. Stop being fooled by nice jobs, nice cars, nice friends. No, that's not comfort. Because when you're following God, you'll actually find out that those things that once bought you comfort don't bring you comfort any longer. When you're truly with God, what brings you comfort is being with God and being with his people. And so what Ruth is saying now, it is right. It will be well with her. Why? Because now she's with God. It says now, Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Oh, man, Naomi sees an opportunity. Boaz is a kinsman and known as a kinsman redeemer. And I'm telling us, we, we may not realize a lot of things have not changed from the old to the new. They're just said in a more practical way so we can really understand that following God is a matter of the change of the heart. Whenever a woman's husband would die, well, God would commission his brother to marry her so that his name could be carried on. And if she, if he didn't have a brother, well, one of his relatives would marry her and then carry on that name, redeem her, redeem their property, and they could continue on in God. Well, Naomi is excited now because she is not even acknowledging this, but this is all God. God is now placing a man of God in Ruth's life. And now Naomi is telling her, how do you have a relationship with this man of God? Do we not realize that Boaz is representative of Jesus and Ruth is representative of the church? Do we not realize that the same thing that Naomi is saying to Ruth is the same thing that God is saying to us? Through the word and through the truth is how you're going to have a relationship with God. Naomi sees an opportunity. Hey, you can be redeemed. Guess what? In the world today, church, do we not see opportunities for people to be saved? If you don't, you're not looking. You're not looking if you don't see opportunities for people to be saved. And when we get that opportunity, what should we do? Tell them the word of God. Tell them the word of God. Give them instruction. Naomi gives Ruth the plan. She says, hey, Ruth, therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your, get, put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. So I want you to notice, she tells her, hey, I need you to wash yourself. That would be for us today. Hey, hear the word. Listen to it. Hear the word. Listen to it. Anoint yourself. Put on your best perfume. Anointing in the New Testament is spiritual in a sense, kind of symbolic of the spirit of God. Well, we follow the word of God through the spirit of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Amen. There's no accident that the Bible says when you read Acts chapter two and they were pricked in the heart. Well, who do you think did that? Well, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. That's how the spirit gets us, tries to prick us in our hearts. Now, if our hearts are hard, we won't receive that word. So we need to check ourselves on what kind of hearts do we have? Well, we know what kind of heart Ruth has. Ruth has a heart that says she wants to follow God. And so Naomi is giving her instructions and she and I love she says, put on your best garment. This is going to make a lot of sense in a moment. Put on your best garment. 
Do we not realize this is symbolic of the fact that she was a poor woman and now she's saying, hey, take off those old clothes, put on some new ones. Put on your best clothes. Is that not what we do? We put off the old and we put on the new. We have decided to follow Jesus. We're not following our old ways. We're following new ways. She says, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what to do. Oh, I so love this. We definitely have to do better teaching in our worlds today. As it comes to our daughters and our sons. Isn't it powerful? She tells Ruth, hey, put on your best clothes, put on some perfume just so you can lie down on the ground. Tell me what that makes sense today, ladies. If someone told you to put on your best clothes so you could lie down on the ground, most women would say, well, if I'm gonna be lying on the ground, I'll just wear my worst clothes. Well, why do I need to put on perfume to lie down on the ground, to lie at someone's feet? Why would I do this? But isn't it powerful what Naomi is telling her? Hey, Ruth. I don't need you to catch Boaz through your beauty. I need you to catch Boaz through your virtue. Should we not be teaching our daughters that today? Even our sons, hey, don't just look for beauty in a woman. Look for virtue. What kind of woman is she? How does she feel about God? Even our daughters, they shouldn't be checking for how good a man looks. We have seen in so many instances where this gets so many women in trouble. Always trying to look for the man who looked the best and built the best. You'll find out a lot of times the men who look the best and who are built the best, they don't always have the right attitudes. So you got to be able to look past that and see if this man's head, as my mom used to say, make sure a person's head is screwed on right. Make sure the right thing is inside of their head. Because at the end of the day, beauty is only skin deep and beauty is fleeting. So you have to look for virtue. So Ruth, Naomi is saying, hey, Ruth, virtue, virtue. I don't need you to go in parading yourself around. I need you to go in at his feet, go in at his feet and don't go in trying to announce who you are. You go in and you let him notice you. Now, there is some Near Eastern things going on here, some Near Eastern culture. Boaz is an older man. He's probably a generation older than Ruth. And because he's older than Ruth, older men did not approach younger women. Instead, a younger woman had to approach the older man first so that she would let him know it is OK that you and I get together. And so Ruth, Naomi is telling Ruth exactly what she needs to do. Don't go in. The way your world goes in with all of the beauty and all of those things. No, I need you to go in the way God wants you to go in. You put on that nice dress, you put on that perfume, but you don't bother them before the heats. You let him celebrate because the harvest coming in for the people of God was a great thing. It was great and people celebrated it. Why? Once again, they're not celebrating the harvest. They're celebrating the one that gave the harvest. Amen. See, we got to learn that in our own life. We don't look at the harvest as much as we look at who gave and blessed us with the harvest. We don't look at the reward. We're looking at the reward so that we can appreciate the reward and we can appreciate the harvest. And so Naomi is telling her, I don't need you to go in flamboyant. I need you to go in submissive. When we want a relationship with God, we don't go in trying to show God everything we can do. Show God everything we've done. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works. 
so that any man shall brag. We don't need to be bringing all of our stuff. No, instead, we bring our best before God. And rather than doing what most people do when they bring their best and they try to put their trophies out for everyone to see, no, bring your best and then submit yourself to God. Bow down to God. He will lift you up. And so the Bible says, watch this. Ruth, it says, and she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. We may have to go another couple of weeks on Ruth. I cannot let this go. Every Sunday I say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I have said that. No one may have noticed it, but we've been here nine years since May 14th. Nine years. And I have said this for nine straight years. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, people have to understand what faith is. Faith is not just what you believe. Faith is what you do based on what God has said. It's what you do. And I want you to see these two verses in all their glory. I won't go past them. And she said to her, all that you say, I will do. How many people? <laughs> How many people? Do you tell them something that Jesus says or God says? You show them the word of God. How many people pick and choose what they want to do? People will pick and choose what they want to do. And I notice people are so strange like this. I don't know what it is about people. But they always seem to pick out the good parts. They pick out the good parts that are low commitment. They pick out the parts that enable them to do whatever they want to do while at the same time saying, I'm with God. But Ruth is a testimony to anyone who wants a relationship with God. If you want a relationship with God, you can't do some of what God wants you to do. You do all of what God wants you to do. You don't go by some of God's word, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And I'm telling you what's wrong with some of us. We're too busy questioning God's word. We have been taught the same thing for 40 and 50 years, only to get to a point today. We got folk who are questioning things that they have been told and they knew was the truth for 40 and 50 years. But I say it and I keep saying it. But there is nothing that changes truth like people's family and friends. Yeah. Oh, the moment my family violates God's word, that's not what that's saying. The moment my friends violates God's word, that's not what that is saying. The moment people get mad in the church, oh, that's not what that is saying. Uh, that is what that is saying. The problem is you're not doing it anymore. You're not doing it anymore. But I love what Ruth does. Couldn't Ruth do what a lot of us do today? You start telling someone about the word of God and someone says, well, what about this? They're always trying to find an angle of where they can say that I, I, I just want to prove that maybe there's another alternative. But isn't it funny that Ruth doesn't start asking questions like, well, why do I have to put on a, uh, 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 why do I have to put on new garments? Why do I have to put on my best garments to lay on the floor? Why is she not asking? Why do I have to put on perfume to lay on the floor? Why is she not asking? Well, why can't I come during dinner and parade myself around dinner? What is the difference between me going before dinner or me going after dinner? I don't see any problem with that. You know what the problem is? That's not God's will. Amen. That's not God's will. And that's not how God wants it done. And so Ruth is a testimony. She says, all that you say, 
I will do. This is why when people trust us, we owe it to them to tell the truth, including our children. Stop lying to our children. I, I, I pray that with everything that we are seeing going on in the world, to where we are watching a world that is telling our children some of the most evil and vile things, that they are telling our children exactly what they want them to do, and we're still focused on the tooth fairy, elves on the shelves, and all of this stuff. When are we gonna start saying, you know what? My children trust me. I owe it to them to tell them the truth from the moment they can understand. And I want my children to always look at me and say, my parents always told me the truth. Why do we not do that? Any of our friends, we owe it to them to tell them the truth. Why? Because salvation is at hand. We owe it to people in our lives to tell them the truth. Because if they trust us and they say, all that you say to me, I will do. Well, if we're not telling them right, how will they do right? Keep telling folk you can't hear wrong and do right. Miss me with that stuff. I am not hearing it. You don't follow God on accident. You don't do that. You don't follow God and you, you, don't, you don't do what you want to do and then you figure out later on, oh, well, I'm following God. No, you figure out from the beginning you're following God. Ruth made a confession and now she said, all that you say to me, I will do. Look at this. Close. John 7, 16, 17 says, Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Are we seeing this? Jesus himself, the God man, even he came to only speak the will of God. He never told anybody what he thought. He never told anybody his opinion. He told everybody whom he encountered the unadulterated truth. I just find it so powerful that people don't talk about it. Every time Jesus helped someone, he would always say things like, now go and sin no more. We'll say, well, just go on and keep on sinning. God loves you. No, no. We need to stop doing that. We need to tell people the truth because if they trust us enough, they will do all that God has asked them to do through the word of God. Amen. Amen. Cliffhanger. We'll pick up right here next week. So she went. Are we seeing that? Faith without works is dead. It does no good for Ruth to say all that you say I'm going to do. And then when the rubber meets the road, she doesn't do it. Isn't it powerful that when the rubber meets the road, she does exactly what Naomi told her to do. And so she went. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we want to be saved, church, we must believe. And if we believe, we repent. If we want a relationship with God, we must turn from the world and not part way, not part way. Many people in the church don't have a relationship with God. They think they do. They think they do. Many people in the church today are like a side chick who thinks she's the main chick. You're, you're not the main chick if you're not someone's wife. You're not the main chick. If you're seeing him on the side, you're the side chick. God don't have side chicks. Amen. God has a wife. Jesus has a wife. His wife is the church. He expects his wife to be faithful to him. The only way we can be faithful is through the word of God. We got to have a relationship. We have to turn totally away from the world and turn towards God. Not part way, not halfway. If you're even three quarters of the way, you're not there. You're not there. 
No. Total submission is what Ruth just told us. If we want to be saved, church, we repent, we confess that Jesus is the Son of God, meaning he's the Lord of our life. We're going to see as we keep going in Ruth that Ruth is going to live up to her confession. Everything she said in that confession, she's going to do it. She's not going to leave one detail unturned. She wants a relationship with Boaz. So you know what she has to do? She has to do everything Naomi tells her to do to not just have a relationship, because if she wanted a relationship with Boaz that was not of God, she could have just did what she wanted to do. But to have the relationship with Boaz that is ordained by God, she has to do what Naomi tells her to do. And if we want the relationship with God that God wants us to have, we must do all that God tells us to do. Then, church, we are baptized for the remission of our sins and the reception of the gift of the Holy Spirit of God. And those of us who endure until the end shall be saved. We're going to see where Ruth, she's about to be redeemed. But make no mistake about it. She cannot be redeemed unless she does everything Naomi tells her. And we cannot be redeemed unless we do everything that God tells us and we do it until the end. Amen. So if you're here this morning, you have not answered the gospel of Jesus Christ. We implore you to do so this morning. And for those of us in the church, I just want to keep encouraging us. I hope we can all look at this woman, Ruth, and examine our own relationships with God and ask ourselves, have we totally submitted ourselves to God? so that we can have the relationship with God that he wants. Amen? As we stand and sing the song of invitation.